Hi, and welcome to the Trading Bell Show. We have Pete Stkamp right here at Britain Towers to speak to the Group CEO and MD, Tom Gitogo. Now, they just released their half-year results, which is quite impressive. 193% increase in pre-tax profit compared to the previous year. And I'm here to understand uh, what is that they are doing to continue on with this sustainability, and of course, what is in it for the customer and the shareholders. Tom, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's good to see you again. And uh, a few months back, we were here discussing about your full year results of 2022. And the first thing is that you categorically put it that you were hopeful and you knew very well that you're not also prone to the headwinds that are there. And we are right now in the midst of quite a number of things, especially to your customers who are now facing quite some pressure. But first of all, let's look at your results, which did tremendously well, 193% increase in pre-tax profit compared to your previous year. And I wanted to ask you, how are you feeling about these results and what are some of the drivers uh, that brought this performance? They were pleasing results. Yeah. Uh, it's good to see that uh, the strategy that we are employing as a group is working, yeah. not just here in Kenya, but in the region as yeah. well, because as you know, we are in seven countries uh, in the region. Mm -hmm. So that is definitely working. Yeah. Our partnerships with uh, various uh, bodies out there, like telcos, banks, and so on, mm -hmm. is bearing fruit. And some of the measures we've taken in the space of innovation, yeah. our customer centricity mm -hmm. is certainly bearing fruit. So okay. to answer you, the, yeah. the results were quite pleasing. Great, it's good to know that. And of course, it's also very good for your shareholders. You know, one of the key things that people would be concerned about is sustainability of such good results and such growth. And one of the key things that I would want to ask you is, what have you put in place to ensure, because once you do good, people always expect you to keep doing that. What are you doing to ensure that you sustain this? One of the things we have done very well mm -hmm. is we have learned to be efficient. Okay. So we don't expect that our operations will be less inefficient than they are now. Mm -hmm. If anything, mm -hmm. we expect our efficiency muscle yeah. to continue growing. So we are able to do business, mm -hmm. uh, grow the top line without a corresponding increase mm -hmm. in our costs. Okay. Uh, we have continued to implement systems mm -hmm. that increase efficiency mm -hmm. and uh, some of the partnerships we have, mm -hmm. we are doing them with people who mm -hmm. have mastered their skill. Okay. So for example, when we go into the micro insurance space or emerging consumers as uh, we call them, yeah. we have purposely mm -hmm. partnered with mm -hmm. telcos, okay. the safaricoms of this world okay. and airtels of this world. Okay to ensure that we are reaching mm -hmm. uh, a growing number of customers affordably. All right. Tom, I'd like you to elaborate a bit more on um, your partnership, because I saw quite some activity, especially on the road shows and all that. And I'm curious, are the people on the ground, which is really in line with the government's agenda, are they taking this up? Yes, we have seen a significant growth mm -hmm. in our customer numbers. Okay. Uh, when we have gone into partnerships with uh, the telcos, for example, okay. with banks and uh, so on, mm -hmm. uh, with startups and insurtechs, mm -hmm. uh, because they are good in what they do. Okay. And uh, uh, if you take telcos, for example, mm -hmm. uh, any transaction um, that they have, if we can embed insurance, because we, we are nowhere near mm -hmm. optimizing that. Yeah. Uh, but the little we have done, mm -hmm. we have seen our numbers grow significantly. Okay. Before we discuss a bit more on your numbers, I'm curious to ask you, are you concerned? I think that's the best word to use, especially in this particular season where we have a bit of increased pressure, talking of you know increased uh, rates, uh, cost of living as well. And I'm sure this as well has an effect to your customer. I don't know, what's in your mind on this? There's no doubt that our customers' wallets yeah. are being squeezed mm -hmm. by inflation in the first instance and also by an increasing cost of living outside of the normal insurance, uh, inflation that as we know it. So we need to make sure that 
our products and services are relevant mm -hmm. so that they're not the first thing a customer throws out yeah. when they experience pressure on their finances or on their wallets. So the key word here is A, we must make our services, and we are constantly doing that as Britam, mm -hmm. relevant okay. and uh, applicable to okay. the daily lives of our customers. So that insurance begin, begins to be seen mm -hmm. as a financial instrument rather than as a cost. Okay. To some of your numbers, the half year results, your regional general insurance business contributed quite significantly to the entire gross earnings. And I wanted to know what are the strategies that you're employing to achieve this particular growth? Okay. Yeah. Any business mm -hmm. looks at diversifying its revenue streams. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although the contribution by our regional businesses continues to grow, it's mm -hmm. currently about 30%. Okay. We would want that to grow to 50% so that as a group, we are not too dependent mm -hmm. on our results here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. That is not to say we are not looking to grow in Kenya. In mm -hmm. fact, our aspirations for growth within Kenya mm -hmm. are quite high and ambitious. Okay. But that does not necessarily occur in isolation to growing the business from the region. Mm -hmm. At the moment, a lot of the businesses in the region are general insurance okay. businesses. Mm -hmm. We are known uh, for our life business prowess here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. So one of our growth areas uh, that is obvious mm -hmm. is that we must move towards doing life business okay. in some of these other countries mm -hmm. as and when it becomes appropriate. We agree that not all of them are ready for individual life or ordinary life business, mm -hmm. uh, retail life. Yeah. But they are ready for credit life, for group life. Okay. And the businesses, especially the SMEs, mm -hmm. also need services that are currently uh, in the life uh, space. Our investment business, mm -hmm. uh, our asset management business, currently we are doing very well in Uganda. Some of the other markets are getting ripe mm -hmm. for that sort of business. So you can see there are avenues uh, that we have seen as Britain for growth mm -hmm. in the region as we march towards diversifying our reliance on the Kenyan businesses mm -hmm. uh, to the uh, total overall okay. group results. I'm sure you're privy to this because I speak sometimes uh, especially to bank CEOs and they are also constantly thinking about diversifying yeah. and one of the banks told me that they have considered significantly over the last few years to get into the insurance industry as much as they can this is a concern to you. <laughs> it's, um, there's two sides to it. Uh -huh. The penetration of insurance is quite low. Okay. And uh, the more players we have, and the deeper pocketed ones like banks, mm -hmm. can only be uh, useful to the, you know, increasing their awareness okay. uh, and diversifying the service provision and products within the industry. So in that regard, mm -hmm. I am, pleased rather than worried. Okay. Of course, there is a tendency to go for low hanging fruits. Mm -hmm. So some of the mistakes I think banks will make is to try and compete with us for, okay. the, for existing mm -hmm. business. Uh, I hope that that is not what they are planning to do because if they do that, of course, we are better at it than they are. Mm -hmm. But we welcome them okay. and invite them to work with us to explore mm -hmm. the untapped 97 yeah. percent uh, of big. insurance <laughs> That's uh, penetration one. so the more the merrier <laughs> and the more deep pocketed the better okay <laughs> fair enough so your improved insurance underwriting performance was mentioned as well in your results and i wanted to shed some light on the specific initiatives or factors that contributed to this improvement so one of the efficiencies is coming from doing more mm -hmm. with the same infrastructure yeah in other words, if mm -hmm. I take the region for example, mm -hmm. we took our time deliberately to improve the quality of the business there. Okay. Now once we had that bended down, mm -hmm. we now went full throttle to grow the top line. Okay. So when you grow the top line without growing the middle, mm -hmm. i.e. Mm -hmm. using the same infrastructure to distribute more, yeah. efficiencies come through. 
The other thing we have done is we are leaning on innovation mm -hmm. and working with partnerships mm -hmm. so that with our partners, mm -hmm. we are obviously sharing the distribution costs. Yeah. Because when you approach an organization that already has a good portfolio of clients, mm -hmm. acquiring those clients or providing insurance services to such a group mm. is not as expensive yeah. as a greenfield yeah. or coalescing these potential customers yourself. So some of the efficiencies are coming through because of how we have chosen to work. If an organization is an expert in a certain sector of the economy, mm -hmm. it doesn't make any sense for Britain to invest in acquiring the same level yeah. of uh, competence mm -hmm. in that industry mm -hmm. or in that sector of the economy. Mm -hmm. If we can work with that organization, yeah. it helps the organization keep its clients uh, because this is value add yeah. and it also helps us access those customers and give them uh, additional insurance services. So our model of working mm -hmm. has helped. Yeah. Then obviously uh, one of the other things we have done is that uh, we have constantly engaged our clients mm -hmm. uh, so that we meet their changing needs. Mm -hmm. When you're providing uh, a customer with something that is relevant to their life, mm -hmm. then of course you will grow your top line. And if right. you grow your top line, mm -hmm. you are underwriting, uh, and if you do it at the right rating, and uh, so the competition or undercutting of premiums does not come into play because you're yeah. providing a service that is really relevant to the life and yeah. ecosystem of our customer, sure. then you will have underwriting profits. That Certainly. is what we have done. Certainly. Let's talk about your investment portfolio and your income in your diversification. The investment income saw a notable increase. And I'm curious to know some of the details on your investment. And why I'm asking this is because I have seen our other peers in the industry as well share away from some of the instruments that are quite traditional in terms of investing. We could talk even about shares and the likes. But yours has kept growing. Um, what are you doing? <laughs> All right. So we have been deliberate yeah. about restructuring our investment mm -hmm. portfolio. Mm -hmm. uh, if I take our life business, for example, yeah. it has a long-term uh, tenure in terms of, so if, uh, for example, a customer takes out an education policy for 15 years, mm -hmm. that's a long-term uh, policy. Yeah. So we have been deliberate about matching our investments mm -hmm with the liabilities, okay. uh, i.e. the policies that we issue. Mm -hmm. So a significant part of our bond portfolio is now held to maturity. Mm -hmm. That means we are not trading in a significant portfolio of our bonds. So mm -hmm. we don't have to mark them to market okay. every uh, end of uh, reporting season. Mm -hmm. What that does is it insulates mm -hmm. that portfolio from the varying uh, dynamics in the market. Yeah. We've seen interest rates uh, shoot up. Mm -hmm. You won't believe it, but uh, we are in a unique si situation yeah. where our short-term interest rates at the moment mm -hmm. are higher than some of the long-term oh. uh, interest rate mm -hmm. instruments. Yeah. So you have a yield curve mm -hmm. that has a blob mm. at the front yeah. and then a continuation of a normal yield curve. Okay. That wrecks havoc mm -hmm. to a bond portfolio yeah. that is purely or entirely mm -hmm. a mark to market or available for sale yeah. investment uh, uh, portfolio. So by matching deliberately our investments to the ri uh, risk profile mm -hmm. of our liabilities, mm -hmm. that has uh, insulated us from a significant yo-yoing nature okay. of investment income. Okay. The other thing we have done mm -hmm is we have been deliberate uh, on our property portfolio. Okay. A lot of our uh, properties now, mm -hmm. uh, if you take our center, for example, yeah. uh, Brit Britam Tower, yeah. it is uh, uh, entirely occupied at the moment. Wow. So okay. that obviously mm -hmm. has helped improve and uh, uh, our investment income wow. and made it uh, steady as well. Yeah. 
I love that and congratulations on that as well. I think last time you were still at some percentage hoping to have full yes, occupancy. Yes, we were yeah. at about 80%. Oh, yeah. I'm happy to say we are now at uh, 100%. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> so if you are looking to get space in Britam Tower, yeah. I'm sorry. Just wait. Mm. <laughs> I love that. Okay, operating expenses ratio at 30%, quite commendable as well. Any measures and practices that you've put in place to maintain this at that? So one of the things that uh, we have done is, uh, uh, I, I mentioned earlier, yeah. is working with organizations, yeah. working with partners. Our strategy, mm -hmm. uh, if I can actually touch it on yes. it, yes. is Epic Squared. Mm. Oh. E mm -hmm. is for our employees and our financial advisors. Okay. We look after them, mm -hmm. they look after our business, and they look after our customers. Okay. It sounds simple, but it is also deep and profound. Yeah. P in mm -hmm. the epic is partnerships and digital mm -hmm. distribution. Mm -hmm. So a lot of our expense uh, efficiency yeah. has come from digital distribution yeah. because it's, you can do more cheaply. Mm -hmm. Uh, we intend to continue doing that. Mm -hmm. We will work with insurtechs or any startups that are experts in a certain digital uh, distribution platform. Mm -hmm. We don't have to invest in those platforms as Britain if mm -hmm. we can work with someone who is an expert there. Mm -hmm. So that has brought our uh, costs down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And because we will do more of that, mm -hmm. it has worked for us so there's no need to change, mm -hmm. so we will do more of that. Mm -hmm. We expect that our expense ratio uh, will be sub 30 okay. uh, in the not too distant mm -hmm. future. The I is innovation mm -hmm. because we have been innovative in some of the ways we do uh, our uh, business, yeah. which again brings down costs yeah. when you cut out processes that were there previously for okay. whatever reason, mm -hmm. but are not relevant uh, yeah. today. And then obviously being customer centric okay. uh, is the first C. And okay. then the second C, because I said epic C squared, yes, C squared. is conduct. We are mindful about how we do our business. Yeah. We want to be fair to the environment. Mm -hmm. We want to be fair uh, to our customers and uh, all our stakeholders. Okay. Treat the everyone right, including the environment. And that's partly why uh, Britam is big on ESG. Okay. And I'm sure we will end with uh, what you're doing on the ESG part. Um, yeah. But of course, great uh, epic square, <laughs> if yeah. I may call that, in terms yeah. of your strategy. There was one dot here on a decline, I think, on your net fair value losses from equities and government securities, and it was noted in your results. Yes. Could you elaborate on your strategies used to mitigate this and yes. such losses? Yeah. Now, for um, an organization our size, yeah. uh, we have a huge uh, portfolio. Yeah. You cannot have all your bonds, for example, yeah. uh, as held to maturity. Mm -hmm. So you'll still have um, a significant part yeah. that is uh, available for sale or marked to market. Okay. Now, <coughs> if you have a, a bond mm -hmm. that is f has a coupon rate of 13% or 14%, yeah. you are laughing all the way to the bank yes. this time last year. Mm. But at the moment, the last few issues have been northwards of 15%. 15, 16. In fact, 16, 17 yeah. percent, mm -hmm. almost 17 percent in the right. last issue. Yeah. So what that does mm. is it makes your beautiful, wonderful 14 percent bond loss making now because You're of right. the 3 percent right. margin. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, crudely speaking, mm -hmm. but actually that's what happens. Yeah. So you, you cannot avoid a fair value loss. Okay because some of the bonds you hold mm -hmm. are marked to market, mm -hmm. and we have seen our market yo-yo. Oh, you're right. Um, I, I, the, the other reason, obviously, is you can't have all your investments in government boards, for example. Mm -hmm. So we are exposed to the uh, listed uh, stocks on the uh, stock exchange, you're right. and we have seen uh, values mm -hmm. or prices yeah. of most of the stocks, yeah. pretty much all the stocks mm -hmm. on the Nairobi Securities Exchange yeah. drop. Yeah. So again, that's a fair value loss. Right. But what we have done mm -hmm. is uh, we have uh, looked at and uh, deliberately structured our portfolio mm -hmm. 
so that the exposure we have mm -hmm. to these fair value uh, losses mm -hmm. is significantly reduced yeah. compared to years past. Okay. Time is not on our side, and I have a few more things uh, to ask you. I'm curious to know about the reporting using the IFRS 17 and whether it has, I, I don't know, what has been your observation and whether it has contributed to this jump? <laughs> uh, no, it hasn't, because it's okay. a disclosure. It's just a disclosure uh, mechanism. Okay. Um, IFRS. Okay. It does not change our strategy, okay. and it doesn't change the way we do things. Okay. But it is good for the industry, mm -hmm. because it does two things. Mm -hmm. One, mm -hmm. it improves uh, comparability. Mm -hmm. So the results of insurance group A mm -hmm. can now be compared like for like yeah. or with uh, the results of insurance group mm -hmm. B. Mm -hmm. The second thing it has done is it calls for a lot more disclosure mm -hmm. and therefore uh, organizations have to capture a lot more data in mm -hmm. a certain way. Uh, because of that openness mm -hmm. it has increased the transparency okay. in the insurance industry. Uh, so the pricing of uh, insurance products is mm -hmm. now up for scrutiny. Mm -hmm. Any loss-making uh, products that an insurance company has mm -hmm. will be very evident to the general public and the investing uh, public. Yeah. So, um, but it has also called for investment because some of the data required to make some of the disclosures that IFRS 17 has come up with yeah. are quite detailed. Okay. And um, this obviously puts pressure yeah. on uh, uh, the players. For example, the, big, the bigger players uh, such as ourselves have invested in systems that are upwards of 100 million shillings. Yeah. Uh, some of the smaller insurance company players mm -hmm. have some of them have had to come together to share this uh, cost. But overall, okay. apart, aside from the initial investment uh, uh, required, mm -hmm. it's a very good IFRS. Okay. So two packed one. One of the things that I had during your release is that uh, you, you, uh, your decision was not, was not to recommend a payment of the interim dividend. I think you have a plan for that. Maybe you could elaborate yes, on that quickly. Yeah. And then as well as uh, talk, talking about your reducing, reducing your equity holdings in some of your portfolios, particularly life. Uh, yeah. What informed all this? So if I start with the equities, the, yes, equities. Uh, mm -hmm. it is not a good time to invest significant amounts right. of money on the securities exchange. Yeah, you mentioned. The press, prices are quite depressed. Yeah. And uh, it's anyone's guess how long that would take. Mm -hmm. okay. Of course, for a balance sheet our size, mm -hmm. we still have to invest in securities. We yes. have to diversify yeah. our investment uh, vehicles. Okay. Uh, but we are giving priority mm -hmm. to other investment mm -hmm. vehicles okay. at the moment mm -hmm. because of the depressed nature okay. of the securities exchange. Right. And I need to say here, yes. it's not just the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Yeah. It is worldwide. It's worldwide. I'm right. not aware of any securities exchange that is doing great You're at right. the moment right. uh, because of various reasons. Mm -hmm. The Global interest factors. rates You're in right. the US, mm -hmm. the war in Ukraine, yeah. and, uh, and so on and, and, and so forth. Right. Now, regarding the our... Dividend? Uh, dividend. Yeah. Uh, there's two two issues. Mm -hmm. uh, one, mm -hmm. there's still some investments we need to make to continue on this good transformational journey whose results we have seen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's some investments, especially in the area of IT, mm -hmm. that we need uh, to make. Okay. Uh, secondly, mm -hmm. uh, because of some losses we made in the past, mm -hmm. we have a negative retained earnings mm -hmm. uh, that we have been reducing over time. Okay. And my estimation is, and it is uh, not prudent to pay a dividend when you have a negative retained uh, right. earnings. But with the profits we have been making now and consistently, and that is my expectation going forward, okay. uh, given the strategy I talked about earlier, yeah. we see ourselves extinguishing that negative uh, retained earning okay. quite soon. Which is and good. we will be able to pay uh, dividends because our shareholders deserve mm. uh, a dividend. You're right. Mm. All right, I have to close with this. Milele Jr., you've launched something for the young people. This is uh, what age? I think it's uh, young people who are below 37 weeks to 18 years. That's right, yes. What informed this and what are you aiming at? <laughs> so one of the things is that we obviously uh, know yeah. that in the region, yeah. demographics are changing. Definitely. You and I yeah. are old. <laughs> 
Okay. <laughs> so the future belongs to the younger yeah. generation. Yeah. So that's one. Mm -hmm. We must start positioning ourselves yeah. and capturing our clients mm -hmm. as they come up the ranks. Mm -hmm. So that's one. But two, mm -hmm. uh, why not? Yeah. Why shouldn't? Uh, why should our children mm -hmm. not have? Uh, health product yeah. that is tailored yeah. and tailor-made mm -hmm. uh, for the young uh, generation. Okay. So we are very happy that we are uh, the first to do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, you won't believe it, uh, it was launched recently, but already mm -hmm. the sales are coming in. Yeah. Uh, someone likes saying thick and fast. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> You're a critical investor with housing finance, and I saw them report some profits the last two years. Are you happy about that? Yeah, we are happy with our uh, strategic investment yeah. in housing finance. Yes. Um, we will continue um, uh, our investment there. Okay. And we will support them in all the ventures that they are undertaking to see that they continue being uh, profitable. Okay. You said earlier mm -hmm. that banks are coming into our space. Yes. Doesn't it make sense to you that Britam also wants to <laughs> be in the banking space? <laughs> I see that, I see that. I want to end this conversation, but you spoke about a cat in your house. <laughs> How is your relationship going? Now, um, I was never one for cats. Yes. Um, and so I resisted uh, having a cat at home. Yeah. One was sneaked in. Yeah. And uh, I loathed the idea. Yeah. But between you and me, yes. don't, don't tell anyone. I'm actually now uh, a great cat lover. Looking forward to it. And what it says to me yes. is that uh, change is necessary. <laughs> change is necessary. There could be someone out there resisting something that is actually good for them. That's good for them. Yeah. Wow. Thank you so much, Tom, for your time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> there you have it. Tom Gitogo, the Group MD and CEO, right here at Britain. Quite optimistic. When we were here last time, it was very optimistic, and indeed they have delivered 193 increased pre-tax profit compared to the previous year, and definitely looking forward to even more. Thank you so much for your time. We'll leave you now with the markets. We have clearly outlined in the conversion offering memorandum, in light of the very long history the REIT has had and the challenges it has experienced, um, this was the culmination of a strategic review of the REIT, its history, its performance, its outlook, and it was felt that in the current states and structure of the REIT, it was not going to be able to meet the expectations of investors. So some uh, radical uh, changes needed to be made. And, and the approach that, was then, that we then took was to convert the REIT into, an, in, into a restricted uh, REIT, which would effectively mean that um, we would need to redeem units from the non-professional investors, and those are uh, investors who hold less than uh, 5 million shillings worth of uh, units uh, in the REIT. Uh, and therefore, that explains the rationale for the conversion, for the redemption uh, process which was opened on the 6th of September uh, for all unit holders that were on record as of 1st of September and closes on Friday, uh, 6th uh, of October.